Asher is Executive Director of the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research at the University of East Anglia. Asher, thanks so much indeed for your time. When we're talking about $1.7 trillion, and uh, when the people behind this report, who include uh, the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, uh, World Bank Chief Executive as well, and they say that the richer nations put, should pay for it, doesn't that then become self-defeating? Because if you're telling people you have to pay up, then it becomes a political issue. I think it's, uh, I mean, it, it has to happen. Adaptation to climate change is, is, is not a wish list. It's not something that we, we want to do. And that will cost money and, and funding. We've had a lot of focus, certainly around reducing carbon dioxide emissions, which are very necessary under the United, Par United Nations Paris Agreement. But adapting to climate change, which is what they're talking about, coping with the impacts, becoming more resilient to what is happening with climate change is absolutely essential. And as this report shows, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Investing in adaptation actually benefits global economies very significantly. Okay, but it's the way you get the message across, isn't it? Because everybody is now aware it might well be that Greta Thunberg is going to win the Nobel Peace Prize for raising the awareness to levels that it's never been before. We all know we're supposed to do something, and yet people inherently could well be selfish in terms of wanting to preserve their lifestyles. If that's the case, it becomes a matter of governments having to lead. And do you see the leadership that's required to do what's necessary? I see the leadership on mitigation, yes, so, and that's reducing carbon dioxide emissions under the UN Paris Agreement. In December, there will be one of the annual meetings. All the governments of all the countries around the world will come together to agree uh, what to do next. And, and next year in the UK is a really big meeting of, of the UN climate change countries. And so I think certainly around reducing emissions there is a lot of action and um, we can show that countries are reducing their emissions uh, quite significantly what this report about is is about adaptation so that's preparing and becoming more resistant and coping with the, with the impacts of climate change the two things go hand in hand Governments are very good on mitigation, certainly need to step up on adaptation in particular because it's a developing country story. Uh, isn't uh, the fact that you're content with what they're doing about mitigation almost the key if you believe the analysis that it's already too late to save the planet as it is today on this day in 2019? And in effect, what we can do best is to mitigate the, in, the undoubted disasters that are on their way. The both have to go hand in hand. So um, much more is needed on mitigation in particular to, to reach the Paris Agreement goals, which are enormously challenging, less than two degrees of global warming. We've already had one degree of global warming. Um, your, your film there showed 10 degrees um, right up in, in, in the north. And so I think the, the, the two have to work together it's mitigation and it's adaptation, and we're already seeing the changes, that are the result of climate change, faster than perhaps scientists thought that we would see them. I've been in this field for 20 years, and it seems that the, the impacts of climate change are running faster than the models of the science, scientists predicted or forecast would happen. OK, Asher, really appreciate your time, but we are out of time. Asher Minn speaking to us uh, from the UK.